Hello all, and for this video I wanted to rub up Evola's thoughts on metaphysics of war and some of the main ideas that come with it and apply it uh, towards um, the Aztec Empire and its culture and even expand the metaphor a bit even further towards uh, contemporary politics today um, in a kind of abstract sense. Uh, so if that was going to be the little rundown if you're interested in that, then by all means stay. If not, then uh, good luck to you. But uh, anyway, um, so I guess if we were going to start with metaphysics of war, we would look at how Evola sees the spiritual aspects of warfare. And um, I think in many ways, the Aztec uh, warrior class um, exemplified this behavior themselves in a sort of you know, traditional role, much like Evola points. Uh, you know, he talks a lot about the Hindus and the Romans for obvious reasons. Um, uh, here I want to kind of look at it um, in the Aztecs, uh, because there is kind of some similarities uh, that Evola points out in the different aspects of warfare as, uh, you know, kind of a critique of modern democracies. Um, and uh, just like, uh, you know, the warrior class, uh, even amongst enemies, saw each other as kind of this equivalent, um, even uh, in uh, captivity, there was kind of this dignified attitude and the Aztecs uh, did this as well um, from historical accounts. And, you know, I think what I'm really trying to maybe point out here is um, this kind of difference in uh, colonial uh, understanding understandings of in, in like a historical sense um, especially in America where I think um, you know much like the Aztecs had this spiritual understanding of, of warfare um, I think uh, this kind of plays in part with understanding um, how something, um, how how Catholicism could uh, um, come about uh, in this area as well, and that they weren't too uh, worried about um, being resentful against assimilating, uh, in a sense, would be kind of like one of the insights I would say. Uh, that you can kind of stretch towards today. And I think it goes back to this kind of uh, Aztec um, understanding of, of warfare, uh, you know, doesn't necessarily have to have this uh, vic uh, victor and defeat complex and, um, you know, understanding uh, kind of colonial people that uh, came about in Europe uh, you know, we're, we're demonstrating their own sort of metaphysic uh, in addition to the, to the Aztec. And there's kind of this assemblage of blood that I've kind of referred to in past uh, dialects on this channel. And, you know, if you, there's kind of the, a cultural example that I would point to in, um, you know, the Saiyan race and Dragon Ball Z and how popular that is amongst uh, Latino Americans especially millennials when, you know, DBZ kind of had this, you know, their translated version come over to Toonami. Um, it was a big deal to a lot of, uh, you know, Vegeta and Goku were cultural icons to uh, Latino uh, children. Um, it was very popular in its time. And I think part of that is the Frieza saga really actually, uh, in a way, could be equated to... Um, the Aztecs uh, meeting Cortez and Freeze is kind of this god of technics, just like uh, the European uh, colonizers uh, were seen as, you know, these kind of white skinned gods, uh, according to some accounts for uh, Montezuma. And, you know, the Saiyans uh, were willing to play ball with Frieza because of his menacing power and, um, you know, his own empire. And, uh, you know, I think that kind of ties in with um, 
you know, even in defeat, the Aztec is still was still willing to, uh, you know, defend themselves, uh, you know, whether it was against the Mayans or uh, whatever the case may be. But they also did this kind of simulated warfare in their own, uh, within their own uh, empire. And, you know, these are just more signs that they kind of understood that the struggle of, uh, of warfare, the, the spiritual aspect to it, is its own relationship with man and this kind of um, this kind of state of, of being a part of this this army of warriors that you won't find in a kind of liberal democracy and i guess maybe one of the things that i'm trying to get at through this video is these kind of historical property understandings of of of, of these kind of resentments in america towards the colonizer uh, this is ultimately a material uh, grounded argument and I'm trying to maybe stray that away from people um, and understanding that these were very different uh, people in a, in, a, in a more traditional form of warfare and to be able to kind of have this historical uh, injustice point of view uh, is riddled with just democratic liberal platitudes uh, and it, it I don't think that this is respecting our ancestors in the kind of way that uh, we've been politically co-opted with this intentionality, if you will. Um, and, um, you know, going back to kind of the Saiyan metaphor or example, you know, the Saiyans always got stronger, uh, whether in victory or loss, it was the survival and, um, you know, the carrying on, uh, and, you know, obviously Avila ha has a big influence in these kind of spheres that I'm on, uh, for sort of his like affirmations of, of the traditional man and, and, and uh, you know, feeling sort of displaced in, in modernity and feeling like an outsider. If you want to go more towards the ride, the tiger route than metaphysics of war. And so I think it is kind of interesting to use this text towards um, an Aztec example to maybe uh, examine how the Latino community um, in America in this contemporary time would align themselves in, with these kind of you know, white nationalist uh, talking points and movements. And there's a lot of you know, kind of self-recognition in, in meme culture about that. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm big on memes. I think they're hilarious and they can, uh, you know, cut to the point in a in a comedic way that uh, you know intellectuals like me could only dream of. And you know, I think the kind of uh, mestizo nationalist kind of vibe that's been, uh, un, uh, you know, kind of like budding before us. Um, and noticing how there is kind of this Latino presence in this kind of ironic way with these, you know, um, white identity talking points. And I think part of it is this kind of warrior-like spiritual attitude that goes back uh, to our ancestors of, uh, you know, wanting to actually defend something for the sake of defending something. And this isn't just some kind of kumbaya sort of, shifting demographics kind of uh, point uh, you know there is actually a, a danger to this and you know maybe if I could plug a different video in my kind of political serfdom of the kind of multi-ethnic uh, identity displacement and the kind of void of wanting to use radical politics to ground your kind of identity because it's uh, you know broken in this historical way but at the same time uh, you know, race is such a identifier in American culture, whether positively or negatively. And there's, uh, there's, there's these kind of problems with radical politics with that, I think. Uh, you know, I'm kind of speaking from experience even in some regards here. And, you know, I think uh, going forward, it, it's going to be kind of interesting to see this dynamic play out um, because I think to, uh, you know, trying to uh, defend 
your kind of way of life is is a spiritual um, it's kind of a, this this spiritual idea uh, that goes back deep into uh, this kind of Latin lineage of uh, the war uh, itself being uh, a whole metaphysic and having its own sort of uh, ritual to it and, and the kind of defense uh, you know, regardless of kind of utilitarian truths or growing the GDP and well I was an immigrant at some point so uh, you know these kind of abstract rule of law concepts but instead you know defending and more of a affirmative and less than a kind of abstract uh, concept is perhaps uh, one of the other points I would try to make or have the people watching this maybe take away from this. Um, but yeah, this was just kind of a little short fun video that I wanted to make, uh, you know, kind of equating some examples that I see culturally and um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys for the next one.